Okay, we're going to get started. So hopefully everybody should be able to see my screen. And it looks like we've got everybody listening in. So uh, as I mentioned, welcome. Today we are discussing Website 101. These are going to be some helpful tips and tricks for you to kind of navigate or start navigating your website. This is obviously February 2018. Happy February, everybody. We, we made it. Um, and uh, your presenters today are myself, Emily Bowen. I'm uh, a senior project manager, customer liaison, and I'm also our main trainer here at One Each. And I have uh, my awesome right-hand gal with me today, Allison James. Hello, hello. And she will be keeping an eye on your questions. So again, feel free as you go through the webinar, uh, if you have any questions, you can post those in that control panel and Allison can answer some of those questions or even um, kind of prompt me or poke me to stop so that way we can answer your questions um, for the rest of the group too. Okay, so as we go further on, uh, again, this is just going to be 10 little tips to help you get started. Um, there are, um, you know, if, if you don't know all of these uh, items, that's a good thing because that might give you the ability to then, you know, uh, maybe sign up for some other cool webinars that are coming up in the next month or so, um, as well as look at our support site for additional uh, trainings and tutorials on those topics. So as we get started, tip number one, what browser are you using? And this might sound really silly, but again, we want you to think about that. We're hoping that you're using Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, or if you're a Mac user, you can also use Safari. Um, but you do not want to edit your website, whatever you do, don't edit your website in Internet Explorer, partially because it is no longer being updated anymore. So it's always going to be out of date and you don't have access to all of the features of your website when you're editing in Internet Explorer. So again, don't want to use Internet Explorer, but you do have the ability to edit your website in either Firefox, Chrome, or Safari. Now, um, hopefully you're using already using one of those great browsers. Um, now, the next question is, now you're using one of these awesome browsers, is your browser up to date? Now, you might not necessarily know where to find that information, but it is important, partially because with each update, you might have new features or it might help you um, with your browser speed, all that other stuff. So again, you really do want to keep your browser up to date. If you're not sure to find, uh, how to find what version of the browser you're using or if your browser is up to date, um, when you look at your computer screen, not necessarily at your browser, and I have Firefox pulled up right now, but at the very top of your computer screen, if you are in Firefox, you usually have the ability to see um, a, a, a link or a drop down for Firefox, you might see file, edit, view, history, bookmarks, that kind of thing. If you go to Firefox, the first option usually should be about Firefox. If you click on that, it's going to bring up a little prompt to let you know this is the version that you're using of Firefox right here. And then also that your Firefox or my Firefox is up to date. Now, last time I did this class, my Firefox was not up to date. So I'm just like everybody else. So again, you might have your browser set to automatically update itself, but it is good to go in and check. It's the same uh, order of operations or the same steps to go through to check um, either in Safari or in Chrome as well. So again, you will always wanna take a look um, at what version of the browser you're using or is your browser up to date? If it's not, usually there's a little link right there that you can click to make sure that you are updating your browser. Um, but again, that is something that uh, you will hear a lot. And if you submit a support conversation, you'll hear our support team ask you that every once in a while, like what's the browser version? And you're like, I don't know. So that's where you might find that just in case you're ever asked that. The next question you might hear is, when was the last time you cleared your browser history? And you might not necessarily know that and you might go, oh, I don't know. Um, it is important, and I did not know this before I got here uh, and started working at 1H, but it's important to clear out your browser history from time to time. Your browser starts saving the pages that you've gone to previously. And if you um, don't clear your browser history every once in a while, it kind of gums up the works because you're trying to remember all of these pages. It can slow down the um, overall speed of your browser as well as it can also bring up older versions of your pages. So if you haven't cleared your browser history in a while, I suggest you do that. Now you're gonna go, I don't know how to do that. 
that's okay. That's where we come in handy. There's two ways you can always find your browser history. That first way, again, uh, at the very top of your computer screen, not necessarily in your browser window. Um, you, When I told you to go to Firefox about Firefox, well, next to Firefox, you should also see File, Edit, View, and then an option for History. If you go to History, you'll always see the ability to clear recent history. Now you can, again, get that at the very top of your computer screen if you're using Firefox. It's the same options, again, if you're using uh, Chrome. But you do also have the ability, there is a little, most everybody um, on your browser, you should see either, it might be three dots or it might be three little lines um, over here, which we kind of call a hamburger menu over on the right side of your browser. If you click on that, um, you should be able to find, um, it might be located in library, it might say history right off the bat but you should see the ability to go to history and clear recent history. You're gonna to wanna to clear everything. Now that gives you the ability to still keep all of your passwords and everything else, but just be aware when you clear your browser history, it will log you out of the sites or if you're, you know, if you're logged into, um, you know, an email or anything else, it will log you out. So you will need to refresh your page and then log back into, um, either if you were editing your website or if you were in another program. So again, clear your browser history every once in a while. You might need to only clear it once a month if you're on your website or other um, you know, website pages a ton. You might want to clear it once a week. Who knows? But again, those top three tips for, uh, for your browser are make sure you're using Firefox, Google Chrome, or either Safari. Any of those three browsers will work. Um, Make sure that your browser is up to date. And then last but not least, also make sure that you're clearing your browser history or your browser cache um, at least, you know, once a month or once a week, you know, whenever you can um, to help uh, make sure that you are bringing up the most recent version or most uh, up to date version of your site. OK, so again, that was what browser are you using? Tip number two is support site. Now, we want you to definitely um, use our support site for many reasons. One is because it is how you can always ask us questions, um, as well as you know, um, let us know if there's an issue on your site. Uh, you also have the ability to look up helpful tutorials and training articles um, and find out more information. The support site is support.1each.com. You can also go to oneeach.com forward slash support and that will work. So again, if you have support in one each, Together, somehow you will hopefully find that. And um, there's also a shortcut for you when you are logged into your site, um, which I just logged out, of course. Do, do, do. When you log into your site, you should have the ability up in the black admin menu to, you should have a, a little link that says help. It might say support. It might say OE support. Um, but either way, you might get the gist that it is there to offer you some sort of assistance. Um, and if you click on it, it will take you to the support site and I'll show you exactly what that should look like. So when you log into your site up in that black admin menu up at the very top of the uh, page, you see it should say help. Again, it might say support or always support, but if you click on that, it'll take you out to support.1each.com, which is our support site. Now here you have the ability to uh, search keywords. So if you were looking, if you have questions, you could type in, you know, Rotor. If you're looking for, um, you know, articles or, or anything dealing with rotor images, it will pull up anything that is tagged as a rotor. So you can go through all of this information. You can type in one word. You can type in multiple words. Now, you also have the ability to search specifically um, by a, a category. So underneath the latest news area, you'll see an option for website. And if you come in here, you will have the ability to see anything uh, listed out either by theme. Um, if it's a general option, you'll also see upcoming webinars. So feel free to take a look at that first quarter schedule and sign up for webinars. Shameless plug. Um, you also can view previously recorded webinars. So any webinars that we have held in the past, we always update these recordings as well. Um, so that way you, you know, can always view older webinars and different topics. Again, feel free to use those categories to help you find a little bit more information, or you can always search specifically by keyword or questions or anything else. Now, say you have an issue or you were looking for something and you know you couldn't find the right 
tutorial or training or anything else. Well, that's when you would want to start a conversation. You'll see a little button uh, or a little link up at the very top of the page, no matter what page you are on the support site. And if you click start a conversation, that will take you to a page of categories. You're usually going to be website. If you're a brand new website in Temp Domain and you're in Basecamp, you can submit a ticket or you can always, uh, of course, ask questions to your Basecamp project management team. Um, but if you have questions about billing sales, that kind of stuff, feel free to choose the correct uh, category or department. Again, most of you guys will be website. Once you select the category, you can send us a message. You type in your, you know, your subject, let us know any important information in the message. Be as detailed as possible. If you're talking about a page on your website, let us know the URL of the page. So that way our team doesn't have to say, okay, what page? And so you don't have to do as much back and forth. Feel free to also upload files. So if you have, you know, screenshots of an error message or anything else, you can always come in here and upload files um, and send them to our team. Um, and of course, always put in your name, your your email address, and your website, so that way we know, um, you know, what your organization is. Um, and as soon as you send us a, uh, this message, you will also receive a confirmation, so that way you know that. Um, you know, your ticket or not your ticket, we used to call them tickets, your conversation has been received. Um, you don't have to be logged into our support site to submit a ticket or submit a conversation. You do have the ability to sign in or create a support site account if you want to. And once you have the support site account, you can log in and view any open conversations, any past conversations. Um, you know, so again, you don't have to have a support site account. It is helpful if you do. We definitely suggest that you do, um, but you never need to be logged into the support site to submit a conversation. So again, really familiarize yourself with the support site. Make sure that you are, you know, um, uh, bookmarking this page. It'll definitely be more helpful for you down the line. Okay. How are we doing, Allison? Any questions? No. Everyone okay. seems very quiet. Okay. All right. Keep on going. Tip number yep. three. This should not really be a tip so much as just a reminder to stay organized. Um, there can be, you know, turnover in offices that happen. And, you know, we see, Allison and I see this a lot where somebody comes in and says, oh, hey, I'm brand new. And we don't know anything about our website or what was, you know, any programs are attached to our website. You see people say, oh, we have a PayPal account or that kind of thing. So, Keep organized, stay organized. If you have, you know, an add this or a discuss or constant contact or MailChimp, if you're using different, you know, third party programs or if you're using any of these programs, make sure that you're, you know, noting your user information or stay organized. Make a binder or a little, you know, notebook for this information so you could just pass it off to somebody else or, you know, on your desktop, create a little folder for important, you know, information so that way. You know, if you have a Google Analytics, you know, and maybe you go on vacation, so you can send that information to somebody else and they'd be able to check your analytics or still be able to, you know, get into the, the system and not have to, you know, worry about that. And so it's really, it is important to stay organized, save important links like the support site, bookmark your website. If you are using Google Analytics, again, like bookmark these things to make your life easier so you don't have to search as much. Um, and you'll, is the more organized that you are, the easier it's going to be for you to manage your website and to just feel like you're on top of everything. So again, stay organized. I know it's not a very helpful tip, but it is extremely important. Okay, moving on to tip number four, menu management. Uh, Allison and I also hear a lot of questions about your menu. Um, there are training tutorials for all website themes out there right now. Um, so if you have a website, there is a training tutorial out there for your website. Uh, uh, so that way you can learn how to manage your menu. But we definitely want to make sure that we touch on this uh, subject a little bit today as well. Um, we hear a lot of questions are of, you know, do we, should we create the menu uh, link or the main menu link first and then create the page or should we create the page first and then create the link? You know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg kind of uh, way to go. And the easiest way actually is 
as you're creating content, as you're creating pages on your site, there's a shortcut for you to use in the editing view of every page or every content type uh, to allow you to add that item to the main menu. And I'll show you in just a second. And this is on every editing view. So this gives you the ability to add it to the main menu. You can put it within the main menu as well. So you can add it as a drop down under, you know, another drop down. Um, but there, there are a couple of shortcuts for you to make your life easier. So first, again, as you're editing content or as you're creating content, use the editing view uh, shortcut to add that item directly to the main menu. And then you also have another shortcut that you can use um, to let you access the main menu in a different way. And we're going to show you how to do that in just a second. So Again, if we are on your website or any website, and this is going to be the same for, again, any theme, main menu management is uh, pretty similar no matter what. The only difference is that you have the ability um, or it just looks a little bit different um, on the front uh, or the visitor facing and uh, will look a little bit different styling wise, but all of the steps will still be the same. So. If you're creating a brand new page and you want to add it to the main menu, then you're going to want to go to content, add content, basic page. And if I click on basic page, I can come on in here and say newest page and I can put in a title. I can pop in some content here in my body if I want to. I'll just say content here. And as I scroll underneath this body area where I'd put in you know, content, images, links, that kind of stuff. Underneath that body area down here, you'll always see these options listed on the left. The first one is always, always, always menu settings. So if we click on menu settings, it, you'll see a checkbox for provide a menu link. If I just check that box, you'll notice that it automatically pulls the page title as my menu link title. So if I have a really, 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 really long page title, I don't have to use that really long page title for my link. I can kind of shorten it up so that way I don't have a horribly long menu link title out there that stretches, you know, into three or four lines and it looks terrible on mobile. So again, think about those things. You don't really want really long link titles. You want shorter ones that are easier to manage. But again, if I check that box, it automatically allows me to put in a link title, I can change it if I want to here. I can, you know, update anything. You'll see that the parent menu item is listed as main menu. That means that it would sit with the other items on the main menu. Now, if I click on that drop down, I have the ability to also put it under any of the other main menu items. So if I wanted it to be listed under about us, then you'll see that I have the ability to put it under about us. I could also put it under any of the other drop down items. You'll see that some of these items are indented more than others. And when they're indented, that means they drop down. So board access only drops down under board of directors, board of directors drops down under about us, and about us sits directly on the main menu. So again, I can add this page anywhere in the main menu that I want to. So if I want to go ahead and let's pop it under a campaign can come on down. I don't have to worry about the weight. Don't ever worry about the weight. Title, you can use this to put in a little advisory title, put in a little bit more information. Advisory titles give you the ability to kind of put in a little banner that appears when you scroll over this link. Um, and that banner is readable by um, screen reading program. So if somebody is visually impaired or they're using um, a program um, to read their, their website or screen, um, that banner is readable um, by screen reading programs, and it's also readable by search engines. So it can help you boost keywords, uh, which we all love search engine op some optimization. So again, put in a little title. So we can say, you know, newest pages, oof, the best. So we can put whatever we want in here. And again, that title is going to appear when we scroll over the link. That gives you the ability to add a little bit more detail if you want to, as well as uh, allow that uh, to be readable um, or accessible to everybody. So if you want to make sure that you are following 508 or ADA compliance, again, make sure you're using the advisory title that's here. Now, you don't have to put any other... You don't have to mess with any of the other options on here. The only thing you really need to care about uh, in this menu, provide a menu link area, 
is your menu link title, the parent item, which is where it sits in the main menu itself. And then if you want to put in an advisory title or a secondary title, you can do that under title. Those are the only three things you need to really care about in this menu settings option. Once you have edited that information, go ahead and save. Once I've saved this page, I want to double check a few things. First, I want to make sure that this falls under campaign. So now we can see newest page. I had new page previously. And you'll see that now I have newest page. And when I hover over newest page, you'll see that a little banner pops up for newest page is the best. And that's that advisory title. Again, um, it is helpful to do that. You don't have to put that on there. You'll notice when you scroll over certain other items, they don't have that. But again, it is useful to have that, not required. Now, um, I've added it to campaign. I've added a page. It looks good. Maybe I decided, mm, I don't like where it sits under campaign. I want to move it up to the very top. Well, the easiest way to do that is actually to drag and drop it in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll over the right side of this menu area. You'll notice like a little gray editing gear that pops up. And if you click on it, it should drop down with a list of options. That first one is list links. Now, quick, quick note, if you are on your website and you're scrolling over the right side of the main menu area and you do see an editing gear, but you can't click on it. It disappears right before you get to click on it, which is so frustrating. I've been there a billion times. Submit a quick support conversation. Let our team know. Um, it is something that is easily adjusted and can be fixed. So again, um, if you don't see the editing gear when you're logged into the site, or if you see it, but you can't click on it, submit a support ticket. That is something that you shouldn't have to live with. Uh, it's really easy to fix. Uh, the team has to do it, but it can be done really quickly. Okay, so back on here, back to what we were going over. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and click on list links. That's gonna hey, Miss Emily. Yeah. Could you move to the main, such as between media and contact us? April's asking. I'm yes. Okay. Yes, April, we can definitely do that. So when I clicked that list links button, it put more list links link, I should say, uh, it took me to my main menu links. Now, these are all of the links on your main menu. So again, you'll see about us and all the drop downs. And, um, and I'm going to come on down to campaign and where newest page is. And I have the ability to click the four pointed arrow that's to the left of that uh, menu title. And I can drag and drop this within the menu uh, item. So if I wanted to be at the top under campaign, I could just leave that here. All I'd have to do is come down save configuration, and it's done. But April, um, I also have the ability to drag this out of campaign. All you have to do is just drag it up to the left out of campaign, and I can drag this anywhere I want. I can put this, you know, in between campaign and media. You'll see that it sits um, not indented. So if it's, uh, you know, in line with campaign and media, then it's going to be out on the main menu. So I can move this anywhere in the listing I want. I can make it its own main menu item. I could also put items underneath it. So let's say that new page should come down here and just drag it uh, to the right underneath the newest page and then just let go and there you're good. And so I can do that with any other item. So let's say, oh, I've got test page up here and I want to move test page and sample. Well, sample already drops down under test page. If I move test page, it's going to move sample with it. And that goes for any of your main menu items. So if you move it on down and it has a drop down, it's already going to add that drop down with it. So if you move one item, it's going to move all of them if there are any child items. So now I've moved this here and some other pages underneath it. If I save my configuration and check my work then hopefully everything should do that. Now you'll notice that that, because it is an extra item, this main menu doesn't look as great. Um, the logout button should only appear when you're logged into the site, but nonetheless, um, also think about your total number of main menu items. Um, but for this purpose, at least you'll see that uh, newest page is up here, new page, test page, oh, and sample also show. So all of these are in the right order. If I want to adjust it again, all I have to do is scroll over that little right uh, side, click on that editing gear, come back to list links, and then I can move that uh, newest page anywhere. So if I wanted to move this back up under campaign, 
I can do that and then save configuration. I have the ability to also edit the link titles over here. I can delete links off of the main menu over here. If you delete a link off of the main menu, it does not delete the page that's associated with that link, just deletes the link off of the menu. So there's no worries there. You also have the ability to hide or kind of unpublish links on the main menu. You'll see that gallery is disabled as is the home uh, link up here. You can always add them back by just checking the box or enabling them over here. But there is a way to kind of hide links um, and add them you know, back easily as needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my configuration and check my work. So again, as you're creating pages or editing pages, you can always come in and update that content. You can also, um, if, again, if you don't have the ability to uh, click on the little editing gear over here, there is a way uh, back way into your main menu by going through structure and menus and main menu. And so again, if you go to structure, menus, main menu, and you click on the word main menu, it takes you back to that list links page. So really, we just created a quick shortcut for you. So you don't have to go through, um, you know, three different little menu options. But you have the ability to access the main menu on any page of your site by just scrolling over the right side and clicking on that drop down choosing list links, or on any of the pages that you have, you can also edit where they appear in the main menu in the editing view. So again, don't forget, there's two ways you can always easily manage these main menu links um, in the editing view of the page, as well as in the list links option by clicking on that editing gear on the right side of the menu. Okay, moving on from main menus, um, number five, page formatting. This is gonna be one of the biggest ones. And um, so first of all, just a couple of tips when it comes to page format formatting. We hear a lot of issues or questions about formatting pages. Number one, you will always wanna make sure that if you're copying and pasting content um, from another source, whether it be a website or a PDF or a Word document or anything, if you're copying and pasting in content of any kind, you will always want to um, go through one extra step before you paste it on your website. All of your websites already are pre-formatted to show your content at a specific um, font size. Usually that font size is 14 point font. Um, you know, uh, your site should also uh, configure your content to show in a specific font color. So, you know, all of your fonts should be the same color. You should also have headings that might be set for a specific color and size. Your site already tries to put you in specific formatting. So that way, everything looks nice and uniform on your pages. Now, if you copy and paste content from another source, like I said, like another website or a Word document or a PDF or something like that, that document or that source also tries to format the content in a specific way. So if you tried to put that pre-formatted content on your website that already is trying to format it too, that double formatting can make it look like that just horrible. And so you might notice when you copy and paste content onto your site that you might notice that the, um, the font might be um, completely different. So you might use, be using two or three different font types on the same page. You might notice that spacing looks off. You might notice that the color of the font is wrong or that the size of the font is wrong. And those are little things that if you see those little bits, and I'm going to show you some other helpful tips, um, to double check, you'll want to make sure if you start to see those little inconsistencies that you're going back in and that you're cleaning up your pages. Now, how do you do that? That's where we come in handy. And um, everybody has the ability to clean up their own uh, content. Um, we just want to make sure that you have the, the, the best way to do that. The first is to make sure that on your computer, everybody should, if you're using a PC, you should have a free accessory program called Notepad. And that is just going to be there. It's already there set up for you. I'm good to go. Now, Mac users, you also have a free accessory program called Text Edit, and it's exactly the same as Notepad. You want to make sure that you are using this program or accessory on your computer so that way you can um, basically copy that, that uh, content from that other source, and then you're going to paste it into a Notepad document 
Um, and once you do that, it'll take off any formatting and it basically just changes everything to plain text. So that way it removes, you know, any weird formatting or font size, font color, font type, anything like that. It's going to remove all of that. So that way, when you go to paste it onto your website, um, you really only are now just, um, you know, you're pasting clean content that doesn't try to, you know, already force um, that into a specific, you know, size or color or shape or anything else like that. So again, make sure that you are using Notepad and Text Edit, and I'll show you what those look like. Um, and then the second thing I also want you to take a look at is you have, when you're editing content, you will notice that sometimes when you pay, when you go through all of the steps of uh, copying and pasting your content into Notepad or Text Edit, uh, and then you copy uh, it one more time, and then you paste it into your website. You might notice that um, you know when you try to format it, that the formatting gets, gets carried on throughout the rest of the content. So maybe you try to make you know one sentence bold, or maybe in a heading, and then you notice the rest of the content or the paragraph also is bold or in that heading, and you're like, ugh. Well, I can show you how to get around that. Basically, when you're copying and pasting content into your site, um, you'll want to go through a few things. The site kind of thinks of it as like one giant long sentence. And so you're actually going to use your uh, enter key on your keyboard um, as a way to kind of put a period in that. So that way you're not carrying formatting from one portion of that paragraph into the rest of it. And I'll, again, I'll show you that. But we want you to know, number one, um, you are going to use your enter key on your keyboard. Um, and you will also, you'll hear me say the words shift enter. That means that we want you to hold down shift and enter at the same time. There are two different types of, um, you know, enters or returns on your site. There's a hard return and then there's more of a soft return. That hard return is when you just hit the enter key once and that will uh, give you a double space and I'll show you this again as well. Um, but again, shift and enter when you hold the words or when you hold the keys shift and enter down, it'll give you what we call a soft return, which puts everything just directly on the next line underneath and is single spaced. And so we'll show you how to do that. But again, if you want to clean up uh, any of the formatting on your pages, so if you're copying and pasting content from another website, from anything, um, again, you will want to clean it up. So if I were to copy this content right here, I just go ahead and I copy it. If I wanted to put it on a new page, like the page that we just created, um, do, do, do. let's go with new page. Okay, so if I just use any basic page, again, I'm just using this for, um, uh, you know, a quick option. But what we're going to do, so um, I'm on a Mac, but again, it'll be the same options for you uh, if you're using a PC. You're going to bring up your Word uh, or your notepad item, and you don't ever have to save these items. You're really just using it as a piece of scratch paper. Now, I copied that content from that other page, and I'm just gonna come in here and paste it. Now, you'll notice that this puts it on two lines up here. Maybe I don't wanna have two lines, maybe I only need to have that be one line. You might also notice that sometimes the spacing might look funny as well from you know, what it, you see on the page. And that's normal, because again, when you're copying and pasting content, you're also copying the formatting um, that you necessarily don't have the ability to see. So you don't always know, okay, well, this is, you know, supposed to be in this font size and this font color and everything else. So again, when you copy and paste your content into a notepad item, you might notice that the spacing looks weird. And that's when you can come in here and you can update any of the spacing. So I see our goal. I'm just going to hit my enter key and give me a little more space. How about the same with our strategy? And let's do how you can help as well. So that way we can kind of clean up spacing. Now I can also do that. So if I want to take out this extra space underneath here to kind of clean things up, feel free to clean up your content um, in your uh, notepad item, but also be aware that you're probably gonna have to do some more formatting or more cleaning up 
in the editing view. So again, you can do some here, but don't be, don't think that this is going to be the end of it. There might be a couple more adjustments that you need to make. So now that I have all of this content in here, all I have to do is just highlight everything. And then I'm going to copy it one more time. And then we're going to go into the editing view of this page. And we're going to take out the content that you had in here previously. And then I can just paste in what I have in here. Now, once I paste it in, I mean, I can save my page and be done with it. But um, I am probably want to do some extra formatting. Now, again, we have kind of areas that are, um, you know, maybe in like their own little subcategory. Maybe I want to put in some headings or make items bold. So let's make this in a larger font. All of you guys, you should know all of the little tools that you have in your formatting toolbar, some of the most important ones you'll use. Um, you might use the link option. It kind of looks like a little world or globe with um, some chain links underneath it. You'll also want to take a look and find that image icon. It kind of looks like a little postcard. Um, you might also take a look over here. You'll see a drop down. It should normally, it should say normal. This is your uh, headings, or these are your page headings. Now, everybody has formatted headings in here that they can use. So you can use, you know, heading two, heading three, anything else. You should also always have the ability to change the size um, of the font as well. So I'm going to highlight United Way Works to End America's Education Crisis. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it in heading three. Now, uh-oh, that sucks. So well, how do I change this? Now, again, as I mentioned, when you paste content in here, your site kind of thinks of it as one giant long sentence. And so basically, it's going to carry the formatting throughout everything as if this was all one giant sentence. Now, we want to put some periods in the sentence so that way we can stop the formatting and it's not going to carry for the rest of the, the page. How do we do that? Again, as I mentioned earlier, you have two different types of uh, uh, enters or returns on your site, you'll be using the enter key. So again, if you just hit enter on your keyboard, um, it's going to uh, kind of put a stop to uh, the formatting. So I'm going to hit my backspace button or my delete button, and I can hit it one more time, and it's going to put me right at the very edge of that previous uh, sentence. So right at the end of education crisis, now I'm just going to hit my enter key. I just hit it once and you'll notice that you don't have the ability. It puts a double space in here. You can't click in the space in between these two items. There's a double space here. Now, if I come in here and you'll see that it's still listed as heading three, I can either come in here and scroll through all of this and then just hit heading three, or I can just hit um, the words heading three. But again, all you have to do is just click on the word heading three again, and it takes everything off. So if you are um, you know, wanting to kind of make sure that that formatting is not carried to other lines, you're gonna wanna hit a return, or the, um, not the return key, but the um, enter key. So again, if I wanted to do that with our goal, if I wanna make our goal, let's say heading five, uh-oh. So again, when you see that, that's okay, don't be frustrated by that. What you can do is just come in here. And so I've clicked anywhere that is in heading five and I'm just gonna click it again. I just go in and just hit heading five and it takes off that heading. Now, if I just wanted again, our goal to be heading five, I'm going to put my cursor on the left side of our goal, hit my backspace button once, hit it again. So that way I'm at the in between of that period and our goal. And I'm just gonna hit my enter key once. Boom. And again, it puts a double space in between it. You can't click in between our goal and the end of that sentence. Now I'm going to want to do the same for in 20 or 2008. So that way I'm not carrying the uh, formatting from our goal to the rest of the page. So again, all I'm going to do is put my cursor to the left of in and hit the backspace or the delete button. And then now that I am right up against our goal, I'm just going to hit my enter key just once. And again, it makes uh, a double space. You can't click in between that. And now I can come in here 
and I can make this heading five, heading four, anything else like that. And again, I can do the same for our strategy. I just hit my delete button or my backspace button. And then again, and anytime you use these headings, be aware it will put space underneath and above. So it is going to add a little bit of spacing. Now you can, if you don't want to carry, if you don't want to have that space, you can always choose to do something else. You can say, okay, maybe I just want this to be, you know, bold and change that to 16 instead of 14 or something like that. You do have the ability to just use your regular change to the size. You do have the ability to also change the color up here. So, you know, if you want, you can do that. Um, but be aware that the headings are preset for you to use and also to make sure that you're using them in a way that looks really nice and uniform on all of your pages. So they look like there's a nice flow between your pages. So again, um, you definitely want to think about spacing and, and, you know, if the formatting is carried over. Now be aware that when you edit anything in the editing view of your page, going to look a little different on the page view because you have more room. There's more width in this area in the editing view of or the body area in the editing view than there is out on your actual page view. So when you're making edits, please be aware, it's not always going to look exactly like you see in the editing view. You'll want to do a save and come back and check. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and save and then I'm going to go back and check. And so as you go through, you can always, you know, differentiate the formatting on your pages. Um, and you'll see that this one does look different because it's not in heading four. It's in its own, um, you know, specific size and everything else. So again, make sure that as you're uh, formatting your content that you are using that enter key to kind of um, put a stop in that formatting. It's going to put a little kind of period in the formatting. So that way it's not going to carry it to the rest of the page. Now we, um, you'll probably have other questions about formatting. Um, it is one of those things that you just have to do, you know, some of you have to put in the, the, the work to kind of feel a little bit better and you get in a groove and then eventually it's not going to be an issue. But we do want you to think about making sure that those pages are nice and consistent, which brings us into our next tip, which is page consistency. Um, and again, I can't iterate enough or reiterate enough um, to use those headings. And if you don't like the headings that are preset for you, that's okay. You can submit a support conversation and have our team change the color of the headings or the size of the headings. So again, if you don't like heading two being a specific color or heading three being a specific color, um, we can change that you know, for you. Um, but we definitely want you to have a nice, consistent style across all of your pages so that they do look like they have a nice flow to it and that you don't see different, um, you know, font uh, fonts on a page that you don't see, you know, strange colors that potentially don't match the rest of your site. You don't necessarily have to be matchy-matchy, but we want you to make sure that you're still, you know, look nice and clean and, you know, concise to anybody else. Um, you do have the ability to change, you know, to different colors and different font sizes. But again, think about consistency. If you're going to change something to a different font color or a different font size, make sure you're doing that on the rest of your pages and follow that consistency throughout. So that way it doesn't look strange on just one page. It might look better if it's on all of your pages. And again, as I mentioned, if you don't like your defaults, just submit a quick support ticket or a support conversation and our team can help you adjust them. Okay, moving on to tip number seven, image best practices. Now, we have an awesome image uh, uh, workshop or webinar that's coming up next week. I think it's next week. Um, I'm pretty sure it's next week. <laughs> um, that we're going to go uh, into a little bit more de in depth about your images. Um, but, uh, ooh, back, back. Um, but one thing we want to definitely, oh, no, I'm going forward, not backward. And uh, one thing we want to definitely make sure that you have um, the ability to take a look at for image best practices are um, a few things that we hear most often from customers are, I can't find my image that I just put in my file browser. So before you even think about adding an image to your site, number one, make sure that you're naming that image or that file 
something that is representative of what that is. So if it's an image of, you know, a little girl smelling a flower, then, you know, make sure that that image, that, that file name is, you know, uh, girl flower or girl smells flower or something like that or flower girl, something cool. So that way you can denote it and you can see it in your file browser and that it's not just some weird alphanumerical, um, you know, name that you don't have any way to associate that to the image or to the file that's in your site. You see that a lot. People upload images from cameras and it's always like DSC underscore 553621. And you're like, great, that's, you know, a, a cool image from an event that I have no idea, you know, to associate that. So again, name your image as well. Um, also make sure that you're thinking about the overall size of the file that you were uploading, um, not just the dimensions of the image itself. Think about the size of the file. If you have larger files, so anything um, above one megabyte is going to potentially slow down um, your page to load. So if you're adding larger file sizes, it will take a little bit longer to load on a page or show up. So again, think about the overall file size. When you're uploading files to your uh, file browser, make sure that you're skipping the thumbnails option, and I'll show you in just a second. Um, but we want to make sure that you skip thumbnails. You don't have the ability to choose where that thumbnail image is taken from the file. So if you are uploading images of like a board member, um, you might only get their nose or like an eye. And so again, um, make sure that you're not using thumbnails. Um, we're going to show you really quickly how to make sure that your images are responsive. Um, you heard me talk uh, about in your menu options, use the advisory title. It's going to be the same for your images. If you're using an advisory title, you're allowing um, screen readers to read a title of that uh, image as they scroll over the image. It'll pop up a little banner with some words that are readable, but those words are also readable by uh, browsers, so you can search and those keywords will also be pulled up in browser searches. You also have the ability to add padding to images around your images. So that way, if you're adding an image to a page within um, you know, some text on the page, that text is not going to go directly up against the image, which does not look great. Um, if you don't have images you know, of your community, or maybe you just don't you know, have enough people in your office to go out and you know, take a bunch of you know, nice images, when each does have an image library that you can use, um, there's a nominal fee to use it per uh, annually. Um, but we do have a lot of image options for you, um, and they uh, are always being updated. Um, so again, you know, if you don't have images that you can use, you can always use some of our stock images, um, and you know, feel free to to kind of mix and match as needed. Um, and then last, really quickly, about image best practices are. Um, Change your rotors um, or your main images regularly. Think about, you know, how long has your image been up on your site? Have you had your website for, you know, one to two years and you still have the same rotors? Um, so, you know, change, change it up. People get tired of seeing the same stuff. So make sure that you're updating, you know, to, to represent maybe the season or a cool event that's coming up or a program that's out there for people. So again, um, you know, definitely think about changing your rotors and images regularly. Um, really quickly on your images, as I mentioned, you want to make sure that your images are uh, going to be um, uh, responsive on the page. And there's a couple of things that you'll want to think about. Now, when you're in the editing view of any uh, page that has an image, if you click on the image, you can either right click and you should see an option for image properties. Or if you click on the image, you can also click the image icon in the formatting toolbar. That will bring up an image properties box. You'll be able to see the width and the height of the image if you want to add in some horizontal or some vertical space, which I was talking about some padding. You can do that over here if you want. So you can put in you know, 10 pixels of horizontal space, 10 pixels of vertical space. You'll see a little kind of padding around that. So you can feel free to put anything in there. You also have the ability to put in a border if you want. The biggest thing I really want to uh, show you on this page is the width and the height as well as this ratio option. Now, this image, when we added it into the file browser, was 1200 by 514. Um, now, I can resize this image. So if I wanted this to be, let's go with 1000, 
that will automatically update the ratio of the height to 428 to fit uh, the ratio of 1,000. If I want it to stay at this ratio, uh, anytime you add an image that is wider than 200 or 250 pixels, you are going to, once you find the right width and height, unlock the ratio. So you'll see a little lock icon, click on it, unlock that ratio, remove the height. Now the image might look weird in the preview, don't worry, it'll be fine. By unlocking the ratio, you're making sure that the image stays responsive on the page. And that means that no matter what um, you know, size screen somebody's looking on, whether it's a desktop monitor, whether it's your phone and you know, tablet, if you unlock the ratio, the image will fit no matter what you do. Um, so again, that is something really important to, to you know, look out for. And we will be, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a really cool webinar that's coming up about images. So uh, definitely sign up for that one. Hey, Emily. Yep. So just for everyone who's out there, I know that Emily's throwing a lot at you guys and she's doing an awesome job as always. This is like the tip of tips. If yes. you don't know this tip, please. Make what sure is super it. important, just super important in general, make sure you're looking at your website on different screens. Here's what tends to happen. We tend to work on one screen in front of us and we get obsessed with the look of it on that screen. Well, it's not laid out right, so you, we make adjustments so it looks perfect for us. The next person who's looking at your site does not have your screen size. They have a larger screen, they have a smaller screen, they're on a phone. So making sure that whatever you do will adjust um, and be mobile responsive is the whole point of having a mobile responsive website. So if you missed that tip, come back and watch this video. You, um, when you put a picture in, you remove the um, lock, you unlock the ratio, and you delete the height. And that will make your picture ebb and flow with whatever screen size. Super, super big deal tip. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so, and I know that a lot of you are gonna have questions about images, and again, we have a webinar coming up about that, and Allison and I both have the ability to answer other questions. But we're gonna move on since we're getting down here on the time. The next question we get a lot is, where's my content? Um, we want you to feel like you definitely, as you're creating pages or managing pages, you know where to find them. Uh, so you use your content management filter, your content management list, um, to filter and sort your content in multiple ways, and I'll show you in just a case, in just a second. Um, you can also use a shortcut to publish or unpublish your content quickly. You can do that in, by individual pages. There's always an option, but maybe you want to unpublish, you know, three or four pages. Maybe you're you're just coming in and you're like, okay, we have some content that's been up since 2012 and it needs to go. You can unpublish, you know, uh, pages in a batch, so you can, you know, mark a bunch of. Uh, check boxes and then just quickly, you know, batch unpublish them so that it takes them away from visitors being able to see them. And then last but not least, we're also going to show you really quickly, uh, really briefly, the scheduler. There's a, a cool free option for you um, to schedule your content to publish and unpublish itself. So as I mentioned, your content management filter, if you, uh, when you're logged into your site, you should see the word content up in the black admin menu. If you click on the word content, that will take you to your content management filter. This page is a listing of all of the content on your site. Now, if you have a lot of content, you'll notice that you have a pager at the very bottom to go through two, three, four, five, six pages of your content. Um, you will have the ability to sort this page different ways. You can sort alphabetically. All you have to do is click on the word title up here. That'll sort everything alphabetically. Um, you can also sort by content type or kind of group like content types together. You'll be able to see who the author of the content is. If the item is published or unpublished, you can sort by that. Um, your page should already be sorted with the content most recently updated at the very top of this list. So if you just created a page or just were working on a page, if you click on the word content, chances are within the you know top 10 pages here, you should see the page you were just working on. You'll always be able to edit that page, uh, delete the page, depending upon if you have permissions. Um, or as I mentioned earlier, you can check the boxes that appear to the right or to the left, the other right, of the uh, title. And in the update options here, you can choose to unpublish this content or publish this content. So if you wanted to batch unpublish this content or these two pages, just click update and it will unpublish those two pages 
hiding them from visitors. So you can, you know, definitely use your content management filter in a no number of ways. My favorite way is actually to find specific content types. So if I know that I am looking for a front page rotor image from that drop down, I'm just going to choose front page rotor image, click filter, and it's just going to show the rotor images and it's going to filter out all the rest of the content. So again, definitely get used to that content management filter. It will become your best friend. Um, it's a quick question, um, just to let you guys know, some of you saw on the author field, Sysop, that is our team. So that is your um, one each staff. Operator. Yep, that's us. That's us. Yep, anytime you see Sysop, that's us, just real quick. Um, so again, uh, as I mentioned really quickly, uh, some of you might see the word scheduled. If you scroll over content, you might see scheduled. If you don't see scheduled, that's okay. If you do see scheduled, congratulations, you have the schedule or module, which means that you have the ability to schedule your content to publish or unpublish. If you don't have the scheduler on your site, and again, the reason, the way you would know is if you don't see the word scheduled when you scroll over content, you don't have the scheduler, then you can submit a quick support conversation and ask our team to add the scheduler to your site. This will give you the ability, as I mentioned, to publish and unpublish content um, really quickly uh, by basically setting a, setting up a date and a time for the item to either publish itself or unpublish itself. So all you have to do is kind of set it and forget it, um, and it will already publish itself. Uh, so you don't have to you know sit at your website at like eleven fifty nine waiting for you know that last minute to you know click on over. If you click on the word scheduled, it takes you to a list. So uh, as you add items to the list you've used scheduled, um, they will show up here. Please be aware that it takes about 30 minutes to an hour for the site to register that you have uh, added items to the scheduler. So if you're trying to schedule something to you know, publish itself in like the next 30 minutes, just publish it right there. I mean, don't wait. The, it's not, the scheduler is not going to pick it up in time. So again, if you don't have the scheduler module, feel free to submit us a quick support conversation and our team can definitely add that in for you. Um, as we're getting down here to the last couple, quick one, avoid tables. I mean, that's really pretty easy. Um, tables aren't responsive. They look horrible on mobile. We've all been on a phone where something's in a table and we have to turn our phone from vertical to horizontal to see the other side of the table. That's exactly the reason why don't use tables. Um, if you if you can format your content in a way that you don't have to use tables, try to do that. If you feel like there's only one way to put that content on the page and it is in a table, we do have the ability to create tables for you that are responsive, but our team has to create the structure of the table. So you would have to let us know, I want this table to be three columns and you know, you know, five rows, that kind of thing. We have to create the structure of the table for you, and then you can edit the content. But again, we highly suggest that you don't use tables. Don't copy and paste tables from Word either. We see you. Um, we That happens a lot, and that's going to make sure that your tables are going to look terrible if you do that. Um, so again, just try to avoid tables. Um, and then last but not least, this was really overwhelming, which is okay if it is. Um, there are some really good options out there for you. Think about site maintenance. If you just don't have the time in your day to, to make the changes to your site or adjustments to your site that you need to, feel, you know, feel free to maybe look into getting a site maintenance package. It's only like $50 an hour and you get to tell us what to do. So you can say, hey, could you, you know, update this page with, you know, this new image and this new link and, um, you know, and it might take you 30 or 40 minutes to do that. It might take us like five to 10 minutes to do something. So again, you know, think about using your time wisely. There might be certain things that where it's just easier to maybe um, pay us to do it. And we log all of your time. We can always let you know how much time you have left. Um, and you can use the, the site maintenance for multiple, uh, you know, items. So if you buy site maintenance, maybe to help start like creating a pledge card and you don't use all your site maintenance, well, then you can use that rest of that maintenance package on something else that maybe you need help with. So again, think about site maintenance. And then last but not least, also think about some one-on-one -on -one training with me. Um, I am always happy to meet with you uh, through GoToMeeting. We can share a screen, go over any questions, and have a personalized, dedicated, you know, time where, you know, we're just going over anything specific to your theme. So again, if you have questions or if you feel overwhelmed, there's help. You can always feel free to submit support tickets. 
You can sign up for a site maintenance package. You can also see if we can schedule some additional one-on-one -on -one training for you or for a team. Um, there is always help out there for you. And that brings us in just in time to the very end. So again, thank you everybody for joining our Website 101 webinar today. Um, here is our contact information. Feel free to reach out to Allison or I if you need anything. Um, and don't forget that you can always submit a support ticket at 1h.com slash support, or you can go to uh, support.1h.com. Okay, any last little questions or anything else? Awesome. I'm glad it was helpful, Denise. And you'll be hearing from me uh, as well a little bit later, too, after we get out of this one. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, awesome. Thanks so much, guys, for being able to, to join today. And again, keep an eye out. Uh, we will be sending out the recording as well as the slides. Um, and always feel free to reach out to Allison or I if you need anything.